Hi, this is Jim Wright again, and in this lesson, we'll discuss face melting. Face melting, what is it for? Well, it's for facing a large area. As you can see in the picture on the right, typically you don't have a very deep depth of cut with a face mill, but you can make that cut repeatedly to remove a large amount of material fairly quickly. It is often done as the first operation of an NC program, especially in mold and die work because there may be um, hot rolled steel you're working with and has some slag or some scale on top of the uh, material and you want to get rid of that first so you don't damage the other cutting tools. Also it will give you a nice flat surface that you can use as a mounting position for subsequent machining operations. Typically done with a face melt cutting tool, I've also heard it referred to as fly cutting or slab milling, so there are other terms that are used for this particular type of operation. So when we talk about face milling operations inside of Solid Edge Cam Pro, we'll have to look at some of the options such as the cut pattern, feed rate and spindle speed, smoothing step overs, how to set the clearance plane, uh, and gauges and retracts can be important to set. So those kinds of things we'll take a look at when we get into the actual lesson itself. Let's take a quick look at the cut patterns available to us though. So the zigzag cut pattern, kind of as the name implies, zigzags back and forth, removing material as it goes. On the plus side, it's very efficient, it's very quick. On the downside, the tool spends half of the time climb milling and then half the time conventional milling. And there is a difference between the two if you're not familiar with that. We will probably discuss that in a future lesson. So some materials, zigzag milling is fine. Other materials you typically don't want to do zigzag milling. Or in certain cases, maybe the fixture won't allow a certain type of milling. Maybe it will allow conventional but not climb, or climb but not conventional. And we'll get into some of those details later on. But this is the, the zigzag cut pattern, fairly typical. So if you have a material that doesn't play well with zigzag, you might be able to use zig. As the name implies, we're only going to move one direction. It takes a little bit more time to machine this way because obviously the tool has to retract, move back over to where it was before, and then re-engage. So material cutting takes a bit longer, but it's all uniform. It's either all conventional or all climb milling. Follow periphery is a pretty good cut pattern in the sense that it keeps the tool engaged in the cut for quite some time. It does a pretty good job of maintaining step overs. It does a pretty good job of moving from one pass to the next. And this is a very uh, crude version of follow periphery. We have some improvements on how to make the path smoother that I will show you as we do the lesson itself. And speaking of the lesson, let's get started. So here we have the same setup that we've been working on for the last couple of lessons. And I'm going to open up this face top operation so we can kind of get a look at what it's doing. As we mentioned, this is set to a zigzag pattern. So as the name implies, the tool makes a pass, steps over, makes another pass coming back. Speaking of step overs, that's one of the things I wanted to talk about. You can change the step over uh, down here on this dialog on the main setting for floor facing. So the step over is currently set to a percentage of the tool flat diameter, which may or may not be the same as the tool diameter. For example, if the tool has a corner radius on it, let's say it's a 10 millimeter tool, but it has a three millimeter corner radius, then the effective flat diameter would be uh, 10 minus 3 minus 3, which is uh, 4 millimeters. So the effective flat diameter there is 4 millimeters. So in this case, we're saying the percentage of the flat diameter step over needs to be 75%. We can change that as a percentage value, make it 35%. And you can see when I generate the tool path that the step overs are the passes, I should say, are much closer together. 
and that's true for any other toolpath. If I change this to uh, fall apart, for example, and I generate the path, you can see that the step over remains at 35%. There's another option that I wanted to show you, and that's called path smoothing. So path smoothing basically makes these little hard corners into arcs. And so to turn on path smoothing, you go into strategy and then there will be something like path shape in the corners do I want to do smoothing pictures that tell you okay this is going to be on all passes okay this is all but the last pass in this case I think we want it on all passes so we set it to all passes and then there's some parameters you can set there for like what is the radius of the arc what is the step over limit those kinds of things I'll just leave these at the default and hit generate again and you can see how the path changes okay so that path smoothing means that we're doing a much better job of kind of protecting the tool as we uh, we're less likely to break the tool for example another option I mentioned here was depth of cut you know our stock is currently only set to five millimeters but let's pretend for a second that our the depth of cut on our particular tool was very very shallow maybe you could only have one millimeter depth of cut so how do we change that depth of cut well that particular parameter is back on the main setting under depth of cut so we'll type in one millimeter as our depth of cut we hit the generate button and you can see that we get multiple passes at one millimeter depth from the first to the last based on that new step over parameter. What about feed rate and spindle speed? Well, that would be covered under feeds and speeds. So here you can set the surface speed. So, and this is a metric tool, so it's a surface meters per minute. So we'll say I want uh, 75, and then I want the feed per tooth to be 0.3. And I hit the little calculate button over here, and it will update the spindle speed and the feed rate. This is not an option that you have to generate the toolpath for. In other words, if you change the feeds and speeds, it automatically changes. You could generate it, but it's not necessary. I also wanted to show you how to pick the floor plane. That's back under the main setting. And you see that there's a specified cut area floor, and if I click on display, it'll display that face. I can also go and reselect a new face. So if I say this X here will allow me to remove the existing face and then I could choose a new face for example I could pick the lower face oh uh, one thing I need to mention here this is the quick pick dialog and how do you get the quick pick dialog well if you pick a face very very quickly you won't get it but if you wait a second before you pick the face you'll notice the little dot 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 there next to my cursor once I once that dot 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 comes on if I then select that surface, I'll be able to pick any of the faces that that particular uh, cursor location pierced through in this 3D model. So in this case, I want the very first one on the list. And so now I've really vastly changed my program because now when I hit the generate button, the Solid Edge Cam Pro recognizes that there's geometry out there, so it will create a toolpath that tries to avoid that that island that stands up there. This would be a very illogical toolpath. I would never do this with a face mill. So this is just for an example of showing you how to pick that face. So let's go back and choose the face that we had before. So now we're back to where we were. Another option you can change is what we call non-cutting moves, like my engage and my retract. So if I click on the non-cutting moves area, I can say, let's change the engage. Right now the engage, you can see over here, tool drops down, moves over, and then starts its work. Uh, but I could actually change that to a different type of engage motion. And there are lots and lots of different uh, types of engages you could choose. I'm not going to show you all the differences, but let's say that I want a an arc 
and I'll make the radius 25% of the tool diameter, an arc angle of 90, and I'll give it a minimum clearance distance of 15 millimeters. Now we hit generate and you can see that now we have a much larger radius that proceeds in from farther away. So lots of different engages you can apply. Um, retracts also are the same thing. Generally what we do with retracts is we have them the same as the engage. Right? You can see that's the default there. And the last thing I wanted to show you was the clearance plane. And you'll notice that that is actually being inherited. If I go in here under transfer slash rapid, you'll see that the clearance option is to use inherit. In other words, we're inheriting this from something else. So what this means is if we were to look at the operation navigator from the geometry view, you can see how this operation is listed underneath workpiece and workpiece is listed under MCS main. MCS main is where the default clearance plane is selected. So the default clearance plane is selected here but I can choose if I want inside of this operation to change it to some value. So I, maybe I want it to be a plane that is parallel to this plane we're going to make a wavelength geometry and then we're going to grab this this parallel plane and we'll move it up to 100 millimeters above that face. Hit the generate toolpath again and now my clearance plane so all my tool transfer moves are from there. We're not using the inherited geometry where the, there's one that we specified. But switch that back I can say use the inherited one and generate and we're back to where we were. I will hit the OK button here to accept all these changes. If you decide that the clearance plane for all operations needs to be modified, the best place to change it obviously would be in under MCS main. And so here you can specify the automatic plane is the default. It's a 10 millimeter height above the highest point of the part. That works pretty well for most situations. Now we'll take one last look at our program so far. Don't want this to run too slow because we have so many passes to make. But there's our five passes at one millimeter each. Pass smoothing is turned on. Nice clearance plane. It looks like a pretty good operation to me. Okay, that's all the time we have for this lesson. Thanks and we'll have another lesson very soon.